I'm Melissa with EECC Travels and I am back with another cruise tips video. So a lot of you have been asking lately about bringing beverages aboard a cruise ship. What can you bring? How do you need to pack it? Where does it go? Things like that. So I have done some research. I've compared six of the cruise lines um, that are here in the United States and what their beverage policies are, what's allowed, what's not allowed, we're gonna go over that. Also, many of you have asked how we personally carry our drinks aboard because we um, love to bring our 12 packs of soda and we strap them with bungee cords onto our luggage. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So be sure and stay around till the end. So I have compared these cruise lines, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Disney, Princess, and MSC on what their beverage policies are, what alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages you are allowed to bring on board. I have made a spreadsheet. Okay, the spreadsheet compares them all. I'm going to post this spreadsheet in our community tab on YouTube and also on our Facebook page so it'll be easy for you to find and save for future reference. Let's get started. Okay, first thing up is canned beverages. Can you bring them on? How many are allowed? Let's start there. So with Carnival, you are allowed 12, 12 ounce either cans or cartons per person. So when we say cans or cartons, this can be anything. It can be your soda, it can be canned juices, it can be that canned flavored water if that's your drink of choice, and then cartons. So if you like um, a special drink like the Boost uh, drinks that have lots of vitamins and minerals in them, you can bring those. If you like the Atkins shakes, things like that. As long as it's 12 ounces, it's in a can or a carton, you can bring it on board. Okay, while we're on our sodas, let's talk about bottles though. Carnival does not allow bottles of any kind. So you can't bring bottled water, you can't bring bottled uh, sodas, nothing in a screw top bottle can be brought. The cans see have a factory seal on them that cannot be broken. Unfortunately, the reason Carnival made this change is because too many people were taking those bottles of, say, Sprite or bottled water, and they were taking the lids off, they were substituting alcohol, and trying to sneak drinks on board, so that messed it up for everybody who was legitimately bringing on bottled drinks. Okay, let's look at Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean allows 12 up to 17 ounce cans, cartons, or bottles on board. So you can bring that bottled water, you can bring your favorite drink in a bottle. This is good for those of you who like energy drinks because a lot of those are bigger than 12 ounces. So Royal Caribbean, you've got a little bit more leadway on what drinks you can bring on board. Norwegian, not allowed you're not bringing anything on Norwegian, so don't even try. Um, no cans, no bottles, no types of uh, non-alcoholic beverages are allowed. Disney does not allow you to bring your own because they're included at no extra charge. So on a Disney cruise, you can go and you can get unlimited sodas um, at many places in the dining room and there are several places around the ship that you can go take your refillable mug or they're gonna have cups available for you and you can get unlimited drinks, sodas, juices, uh, milk, things like that, anything you want. The only catch is you can't go to a bar and get a soda. If you go to a bar and order a soda, you're gonna be charged for it just like any other drink. But if you, if you want your soda fix on Disney, you can get it and it's included in the cost of the cruise. Okay, Princess is a sister company to Carnival and they have the same rule for non-alcoholic beverages. So 12, 12 ounce cans or cartons, no bottles are allowed for non-alcoholic beverages. Okay, MSC, not allowed. Same as Norwegian, you're not gonna bring any types of in any type of non-alcoholic beverages on board. 
Okay, so how are you gonna get these on board? First, they have to be in or with your carry-on. They don't have to actually be inside your carry-on bag. They can be on the top, they can be on the shoulder bag, you can carry them in your hand, but they have to be with you carried on the ship. You cannot put these in your checked bags, and that's gonna be across the board with any of the cruise lines that allow non-alcoholic beverages, they have to be in your carry-on. So, couple of tips. Um, I am gonna show you at the end how we use bungee cords to strap them onto our um, carry-on luggage. That is one way of doing it. I had the question, can I take them out of the case and put them in a tote bag? There is nothing on any of these websites that says it has to be in its original packaging. So yes, you can take those 12 cans or 12 cartons or whatever you're drinking and put them in a tote bag and put it on your shoulder. So that if you're not, if you're checking all your luggage and you're just trying to get your drinks on board, that might be an easier way of doing it. Um, so as opposed to carrying that clunky 12 pack of sodas on board. Okay, so that's the non-alcoholic. Let's talk about the alcoholic beverages. Okay, on Carnival, you are allowed one bottle of wine or champagne up to 750 milliliters per person 21 years or older. Now, where are you gonna drink this? If you drink it in your cabin, there's no charge for it at all. And you can bring your own corkscrew if you choose, but make sure it meets guidelines. For instance, I did look it up on TSA. TSA allows corkscrews to fly in both carry-on and checked bags as long as there's no knife blade. So some corkscrews have that little knife blade so you can cut the labels uh, before you dig into the cork, uh, and some don't. So if you have a corkscrew that does not have that knife blade, one of those little ones, not one of the big giant corkscrews, then yes, you can bring that on. Or you can ask your oh-so-sweet cabin steward if they can supply one for you. Or you can save yourself the trouble and get a screw top bottle, which is what I did on the last cruise because I had dealt with the corkage issue before and I said, well, I like Moscato. I'm an easy, you know, I like sweet wine. I like Moscato. So I went and found me a bottle of Moscato that had a screw top. Guess what? It was just as good, worked perfect, and I didn't have to worry about getting that cork out. Okay, so let's talk about corkage fees on Carnival. If you take that bottle of wine that you brought with you onto the ship and you bring it into the dining room, any of the specialty dining restaurants, or you take it to a bar, they're gonna charge you a $15 corkage fee. So just keep that in mind. Yes, you didn't pay to bring the wine on, but you will have to pay to open it if it's brought into one of those venues. If you open it in your cabin, there's no corkage fee. Okay, let's look at Royal Caribbean. Okay, Royal Caribbean allows two bottles 750 milliliters per bottle per cabin, not per person. So if you've got four adults in a cabin, you can still only have two bottles of wine or champagne. And at least one person in the cabin has to be an adult. So if you have, say, me and two of my kids are in the cabin, I can still bring two bottles of wine for my personal consumption because there's at least one adult in the cabin. Okay, so it's a, it's a little different from cruise line to cruise line. That's why I'm doing this comparison. Okay, um, corkage fees on Royal Caribbean. Okay, the corkage fees on Royal Caribbean are just the same as Carnival. It's $15 per bottle if opened in a dining room, specialty dining restaurant or bar, no charge for opening it in your cabin. Okay, how about Norwegian? Okay, Norwegian does things a little bit differently. They do not limit the amount of wine you can bring on. You can bring as much wine as you want, and they don't limit the bottle size either. So you can bring a typical size 750 milliliter bottle of wine or champagne, or you can bring the 1500 milliliter magnum of wine or champagne. You can bring as many bottles as you want per adult 21 or elder. Here's the catch though. You have to pay a corkage fee per bottle no matter where you consume that bottle. The corkage fees are $15 per 750 milliliter bottle 
and $30 per Magnum. So you, you can bring on as much wine as you want, but you have to pay that corkage fee per bottle, no matter where it's consumed on the ship. So see why we're doing this comparison? It's very different ship to ship. So when someone asks me, hey, can I bring wine on? First question is, what cruise line? Because it's gonna vary. Okay, let's look at Disney. Okay, here's a twist here. Disney is very different on their alcoholic beverage policy, okay? They allow beer. All right, let's get into that. All right, I'm gonna read this. Disney allows two 750 milliliter bottles per person, 21 years of older. Here's the big difference, at embarkation and in each port of call. So you can bring two bottles of wine on when you get on the ship per person, and then in each port you go in, you can bring two bottles of wine back as well. Out, other types of alcohol are not allowed, but wine and champagne are. So that's pretty cool. So you can, if you're a wine drinker like I am, you can bring on your wine, you run out, you can get more in port, and you will always have wine to drink. And remember I said beer. So if you're a beer drinker instead of a wine drinker, this is the only cruise line that I've seen that does this. You can bring six 12 ounce beers instead of wine. And it's the same at embarkation and in each port. So that's very different. Jason's a beer drinker. That's something that he would absolutely love about a Disney cruise is being able to get his, bring his favorite beer and then get his beer in each port. So that's pretty cool. Okay, Princess Cruise Lines. So Princess does not limit your bottles of wine. You can bring as many bottles as you want. They have to be the 750 milliliters and it has to be for you know adults only, obviously. Here's their difference. The first bottle of wine is not charged a corkage fee. Every subsequent bottle of wine is charged a $15 corkage fee no matter where you consume it on the ship. So you're bringing on as much wine as you want. You just gotta remember, first bottle, no corkage fee. Every other bottle, a $15 corkage fee, okay? MSC, not allowed. So on MSC, you're not bringing any type of beverage on board. So that's different. At least, you know, Norwegian did not allow, you know, some don't allow non-alcoholic, but allow the alcoholic, vice versa. MSC, you're not bringing any type of beverage on board with you. So keep that in mind if you're sailing with MSC. Okay, another type of beverage people ask me about is bottled water. So most cruise lines are not allowing you to bring on bottled water. Royal Caribbean allows it, Disney allows it. I haven't found another cruise line that allows you to bring bottled water on. But can you get it? Yes, you can get it. Every one of these cruise lines does offer bottled water. Most you can pre-purchase and that way it's delivered to your cabin on embarkation day and you've got it. Um, if you forget or don't think about it, you can get it on board as well. So here's a breakdown I have of what's offered per cruise line. Okay, on Carnival, you can get the 16 ounce bottles and then you can get them in a 12 pack or you can get single serve one liter bottles. You can get them through the fun ships before boarding or you can get them through room service once you're on board. I have found that Carnival's bottled water is very reasonably priced. It's $4.50 for a 12 pack. I thought that was a great price. We did get some on our last cruise. Also a note is Carnival is purified water. So it has a Carnival label on it. It's purified water. It's good, we drank it, we were happy with it. Okay, some of these other lines use specific brands. So Royal Caribbean uses Avion. Uh, it can only be purchased in one liter bottles and it can be purchased either pre-cruise or on the cruise. But keep in mind, you're buying the one liter bottles, so they're big and I think you have to buy a 12 pack at a time if you're pre-purchasing. On board, I think you can get singles, okay? Um, Norwegian looks like their brand of choice is Aquafina. They have the one liter bottles as well, either for pre-purchase or on board. Uh, Disney can be carried on or you can purchase it. I'm not sure if they have a brand specifically. I didn't see a specific brand. I think it's purified water as well, but it is available. A princess, same as Carnival. This, you can get the 16 ounce bottles or the one liter bottles. You can pre-purchase or you can 
get once you're on board. MSC is a little different in the fact that you buy a water package. I couldn't find where you could buy, I need a 12 pack of water or it, it was a little different. I know MSC is, is a little bit of a different company than um, what we're typically used to. It is a European company and they, they do treat all of their ships as European ships, even the ones selling out of the United States. So I couldn't find specifically a 12 pack of water cost X number of dollars. I could see a water package. It looks like they started at $37 and it looks like you can get purified water or mineral water. Okay, so just a couple of overall reminders. If you're gonna bring on any of these beverages, they have to be in or with your carry-on, not in your checked bags. Also, if you're going to buy drinks in port, they may or may not be allowed with you back on the ship. So it looks like Disney is our main difference where they're gonna allow you to go out into port and buy those extra beverages and carry them back on with you, okay? The other cruise lines say if you buy alcohol at port, they're gonna take it at, whenever you're getting back on the ship, they're gonna take it, put your name on it, and you'll get it back at the end of the cruise. So if you bought that big, nice bottle of rum or bottle of tequila in port, it don't expect you're gonna be able to bring that to your cabin. They're gonna nicely confiscate it, put your name on it, and you will get it back at the end of the cruise. Okay, so let's take a look at how we strap on luggage. So we use bungee cords, and I have a bunch, but I had Jason run and buy me a couple of packs of bungee cords so you could see exactly what I'm talking about. So we have these cords. This came, you can get them pretty much anywhere, but this pack specifically came from Dollar Tree. And there's three sizes in here. So opening it up. Okay, so opening it up, you'll see there is a small, which is pretty much useless for what we're doing, so just put that aside. You have a medium, which is the green one, and then you have a large. Okay, so you can't use these two together. That's why I bought two packs. You're gonna need two greens and two blues, and then we can take the same size and strap our sodas onto our luggage, which makes it more hands-free. You've got one hand on your suitcase handle and you've got your bag and you've got your, your drinks. Now you will have to take them off to run them through the scanner, but it just take, these are really easy to unhook, take them off, run it through the scanner, pop them back on and go about your business. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, there's a couple of ways to doing this depending on the size of your bungee cord. So these are really long, bungee cords, and let me show you what you do with these, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to take your sodas off, hook them together, run them around, cross, put your sodas on, and run your bungee cords around and hook in the back. So you see what I did? So they've got, you're hooked around the back. See, they're not coming off. Okay, so then when you're ready to take them off, all you do is unhook here, drop them, take off your sodas, and you're good to go. So that's the big bungee cords. Okay, with this smaller bungee cord, you're gonna do the same thing except not cross them. Okay, so you're gonna hook, add on the drinks, and you're gonna pull them tight now. and hook across the back, okay? So you'll see these, you had to pull a little tighter because of the size of the bungee cords. The other ones had some slack to them, so you didn't have to pull very tight. But again, they're not going anywhere. And then to take them off, just simply unhook, drop, and you're good to go. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video where we have compared six different cruise lines and their beverage policy about what you can and cannot carry on the ship with you. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe for more cruise tips videos to come and be sure to hit that little bell notification so you know as soon as they're released. 
And if you'd like our 101 cruise tips, there's going to be a link down in the description. Just click the link, you put in your email address, and they are sent directly to you. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. And until next time, happy cruising. Bye.